to go. Hello, hello. If you're just joining me, welcome to Art Tip Tuesday. I'm so glad to be here and I'm really thrilled that you guys get to join me and we get to chat about some really cool stuff tonight. Cool. So I'm here live on Instagram and Facebook. I hope everybody can hear me okay on both and we're gonna just jump in here. Welcome. All right, well, if you're new to me and my page, I'm Jen Brandon. I'm a professional oil painter and I special in, specialize in all things equine and canine and I help artists like you achieve that loose and expressive painting style with confidence and precision. So if that's you, you're in the right place and I'm just thrilled that you're here right now. I want to join, or I want to, I just read somebody said, somebody joined, so I just read it. Um, I want to answer some of your questions tonight. So as you're jumping on here, if you have any questions for me, go ahead and post them in the comments. I will try to get to all of them. If I can't get to them tonight, I will try to get to them in a future um, Art Tip Tuesday. So welcome. I see Deborah and Wendy. Hi, Michelle. Oh, it's so fun to see you guys. I'm really glad you're here. Cool. I don't want to miss anybody, but I don't think I can get everybody's name. Cameron. Hello, Julie. Oh, really fun. Cool. So it's so nice to see some fellow artists here. Um, it's really fun to see you kind of from week to week. So uh, you guys are the best. Hey, Erin. Cool. I love seeing you guys here. Well, while people are jumping in here, um, I just kind of want to hear from you who you are, where you're coming from. And for fun, tell me if you would rather be invisible or be able to fly, which would your superpower be and why? All right, so let me know in the comments. I really wanna hear. And a perk for commenting as well, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway at the end of this art chat. So you definitely wanna be commenting any questions you have or insights or wins. And if nothing else, let me know if you would rather fly or be invisible. So the more you comment, the more, the better your chances are of winning because we will choose a name out of the comments, all right? And there's an extra bonus here today. Um, there's something kind of fun happening later this week that I wanna invite you to. So I'll be talking about that at the end of this as well. So stick around, you don't wanna miss it. I think it's gonna be fun. Cool, so we have several artists here who would rather fly. Everybody wants to fly. Anybody want to be invisible instead? Hey, Amber, I'm glad you're here. Nancy would rather fly, Aaron would rather fly. I think I'd rather fly too. Um, but I wonder if it's an artist thing. That's kind of fun. Cool, Sam, nice to have you back. <laughs> awesome. Well, you guys are great, and while you're jotting down if you would rather fly or be invisible, um, don't forget that we have the giveaway coming up, and I have a question for you to start. Uh, here's two questions, actually. Uh, what aspect of your work are you getting the most stuck in? That's what I want to know. Where are you getting the most stuck in your artwork? And the second question kind of leads into that. What would you like to have more confidence in with your painting specifically? So if there's a point in your painting that you just like are not feeling confident in, you don't quite have a good plan, I would love to know what that is. And maybe we can chat about it here in one of the future art chats for an Art Tip Tuesday. So that would be really fun. So don't be a stranger. Let me know what it is you're going through. Uh, this is for you guys to help you in your journey as an artist and to help you the best that I can. Uh, I have some great things that I'd love to share with you, and so it helps for me to know where your struggles are. Cool. <laughs> so we have, let's see, somebody saying, let's see, wouldn't want to be invisible, <laughs> accidentally overhear bad stuff. I agree. I think, I think it'd be a little scary to be invisible, personally. <laughs> cool. So uh, if you get a chance, let me know um, where you're getting stuck the most with your artwork and what you would like more confidence in. While you're jotting those things down, I'm gonna jump into some questions that you guys have had for me the past couple weeks and I wanna be able to answer them for you. 
So real quick, if you haven't yet grabbed my free painting guide, it's a PDF chock full of great information on how to paint loose, how to make sure you're not overworking your painting, how to know when you're done. If you have ever had those questions, you want this free painting guide, it's going to help you. And uh, you can grab it just by joining my artist email list. So I'm gonna include, actually, um, I'm gonna have my husband who should be on the live here include a link to um, my email list so you can sign up and get that free PDF painting guide. Uh, and I'd love to hear what part of it is helping you the most. Some of you have written to me to let me know that certain aspects of it just like hit home and have helped. I've seen some of your work coming out of it that you've implemented some of the tips from it. It's fantastic. I love seeing it. Thank you for sending it. And uh, I'd love for that to be your success story too. So definitely grab the PDF and uh, shoot me an email with some of the, the ways you've been implementing it. Cool. All right. So let's jump into uh, three questions here. One is from Sherry, who's asking, uh, do you always use reference photos for sketches and paintings? If so, and they aren't commissions, where do you get your reference photos? Okay. That's a good question. Um, I take my photos myself, mostly. I would say a good 95% of the time. Uh, so my equestrian work, I go to equestrian shows or pre-COVID and pre-baby, I went to equestrian shows uh, about three big shows a year. And I would just take my camera or even my phone and take photos of all of the horses, whether it was from the barns or uh, in the showgrounds showing. And I have an enormous library of uh, reference photos that I love to take. Um, and so I just keep adding to my library. I have called strangers who I knew had puppies uh, and asked them if I could come and spend an afternoon taking photos of the puppies to get references that way as well. Uh, you can also ask your followers. Maybe you have a decent or a small following of people who have beautiful dogs or animals and you can ask them if they would like their animals to be a star in an upcoming artwork of yours. Uh, word it however you want to. But you can also um, access people who love your work. So feel free to you know kind of tap into them to get some references as well. If all those aren't quite options for you and you're like wanting something right now or something that's not really accessible, like say you're wanting an elephant or something like that and you don't have one in the backyard, uh, you can always try something like Unsplash, I think is the, the um, unsplash.com and or stock photo and pay to uh, buy the rights for a photo. So you could use it that way. Just make sure you have, you're buying the right, the correct um, copyrights for creating artwork of it. All right, so Sherry, I hope that helps and I hope you're able to get some good references for yourself. All right, Mary, we have a question from Mary. I think I saw Mary here. Mary, are you here live with us? Um, if, you're, if you're just catching this on the replay, that's cool too, but I wanna make sure to answer your question too. Um, let's see, you got a good one. Okay, some of your work looks textured. Is that the secret sauce application? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's my secret sauce application. In fact, there's more I want to talk to you about this. So we're going to put a pin in this and I want to get back to this another time. But yes, there is a trick and a secret to getting some of that underpainting texture that I like to build up. Um, and I would love for you to know it. So give me some time here and uh, more on that later. All right, Michelle, Michelle Brash, thank you for asking this question. Uh, you have a couple questions here, and I know you're here, so thanks for being here. Your first question is, how do you structure your painting time with a little one? Is there a rhythm you have um, you found that works for consistent time in your studio, and do you have a home studio? All right, these are money questions, man. How many mamas do we have here, or parents? How many How many of you are a parent? Uh, let me know in the comments if you're live here or if you're watching afterwards. I'd love to know if you're a parent. Um, jot down the ages of your kid or kids. I am super curious to see how many of you are juggling studio and mama life. I'm sure there are a few of you. And certainly it's, um, it's a different sort of thing to juggle altogether. So to answer your question, how do you structure your painting time with a little one? Well, 
you need to schedule it for sure. I think it's really important to have a master plan, like a master plan calendar that will never work out like you schedule it and you need to know that, but it's important to anticipate you will have time for it. Um, I'm sorry, I'm hearing like a, a background. I think it's the replay of my my live feed in a computer in the other room. So sorry, I'm getting distracted by that. Um, so yes, you want to schedule in time to paint, to be in your studio, um, if possible, uh, free of, of distraction. Um, and that's not always possible. So you also need to really be flexible. If you can get three days in of two to three hours where you just have like zoned in time for your creative, your creative life, that would be awesome. Um, it was my goal to have a three day work week and I was able to achieve it. And believe it or not, you can run a very profitable art business working three part-time days a week. And uh, there are some tips and tricks to that. I can't go into it all tonight, but uh, it can be achieved. And sometimes you also need to get scrappy if you need to build something and do some late nights or really cram in all the work during nap times. Uh, I will tell you this right when you think, as far as a, a little baby, when you think you have a good schedule uh, with your studio and then the baby's rhythm changes. And so you have to flex. You definitely have to flex, but that's okay. It can be done and it can be fun and uh, you just really want to try to be present in whatever moment you, you're in, whether it's with your, your baby, your kids, or in your studio with your artwork. All right, I hope that answers that question. Uh, also, yes, I have a home studio. I love my home studio. Uh, it's really just such a blessing to be able to be home, to be able to be available if needed, and uh, you know, have the, the mom shirt or the studio shirt, hat, not shirt, have the studio hat on um, and be able to do both very quickly. It's really nice. So home studios are great. Who has a home studio? Just curious. Let's see. Patty says it's all worth it. It so is. Oh, we have a few moms here. Hey, Sam has kid two, five, and seven. Awesome. Awesome. Amber, you wish your kids were still little. I totally get it. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, listen, guys, I think there's just great opportunity to learn more about this. This would be a great topic to talk about in another um, Art Tip Tuesday where we can dive in deeper into how to uh, navigate being a parent and uh, an art studio owner and how to pull those creative juices out of yourself. So let's keep talking about that. I love that question. Thank you, Michelle, for asking that. All right. Well, let's dive into the question of the night. What are my favorite sketch materials. Oh, I thought you'd never ask. All right, I want to paint a picture for you. Picture this. The house is quiet. You have your cup of coffee or tea. You're sitting on the couch. The light is streaming in in the morning and you just gently flip through your favorite sketchbook of beautiful sketches. There's variety and it looks like a coffee table book. Sounds awesome, right? All right, we're going to call that Instagram perfect. I'm going to give you the reality picture now. Instead, you open your sketchbook and you find yourself looking at a bunch of pages that are filled with tight pencil drawings that are now smeared. And it looks like somewhere between an amateur stick figure drawing and overworked renderings of you're not quite sure what. Is that ringing a bell to anybody? Has anybody had that experience? You have these hopes of this beautiful curated style sketchbook and then instead it's just like, look, it's a smeary amateur mess. Well, I get it. I know what you're, you're going through and I have some just material tips for you tonight that I think you're going to love and we can talk more about tips on creating that very curated sketchbook and I think that would be really fun too. So let me jump right in to telling you about some of my favorite art materials for sketching. All right, so I'm gonna give it to you all right here and then we're gonna dive in deeper to each one as time permits. So number one, if you're jotting this down, taking notes, uh, you want like a cool like satchel or pencil holder. Um, number two, um, I'm gonna talk to you about some of my favorite sketchbooks. Number three, my favorite pens and four favorite watercolor set 
and five my favorite sketching brushes. All right. Okay, so let's dive into the first one. Uh, like something to hold everything, right? So I like to have like a cool satchel or a little pencil holder or something. This is mine. Um, I think my, it was a gift from my mom. So it's like, you know, sweet and used and worn and it's got coffee stains on it. And I just, I love the texture of it, you know? And it's very compact. It's small. Um, it's actually kind of hard to tell here, but it's very small. It's like a little bit smaller than my actual sketchbook. But you don't want it too big because, you know, what happens is you end up filling it and then it becomes cumbersome and you can't just toss it in a purse or a backpack. So keep it small, keep it cool looking or sentimental or make it yourself, be creative, but find something that like you like the look of it so that when you take cool sketches or photos of your sketches, you can have it in some of the photos and it just adds an extra element of you and your style to it. Um, I also like it to have just like a little handle so that if I'm doing plein air painting and sketching, it can just literally be grab and go and I have everything I need right in it. All right, cool. So um, that's it for that one. That's a pretty uh, easy one. Just grab something, but I recommend it being kind of funky or cool. Um, you don't necessarily want just like a boring like black pencil holder unless for some reason black pencil holder speaks to you. That's cool too. Um, so second, I want to tell you about some of my favorite sketchbooks. Now, this is a really big deal. A good sketchbook is like gold. You, you don't want to give up on a good sketchbook, but I do like to try different ones. And I have found that it really does influence the way I sketch in that particular sketchbook. Uh, some of my sketchbooks have a little bit more flimsy, um, sort of not great paper in a way and I love some of those sketchbooks because my artwork is just very whimsical and loose and I don't take myself too seriously like I might with something with more refined like watercolor paper or something so um don't knock the you know the lesser paper sketchbooks sometimes they have their own purpose too but the first one I want to show you is a leather bound sketchbook and uh, this is one of my favorites and it has a really beautiful tooth to the paper. Um, it, I like the landscape version of it because you can get uh, just really nice wide um, compositions. I wanna show you how, how it takes with some of the watercolor. Um, these are just some watercolor sketches here and it handles beautifully with the watercolor without it being like super textural. Um, there's just a tiny little bit of grit to it, which is really nice. And it's got a nice thickness so that it doesn't bleed too much to the other side. So you can see here, there's a, a painting on the other side, but it doesn't bleed through, through too much. So this particular one is called, uh, Montessor, let's see, Monsor Notebook. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but here you go. You can take a little screenshot of that if you'd like. That's the brand, and uh, I really love this sketchbook. It's a great one for traveling. Another one of my favorites that I think I have the most of this sketchbook is the Lita Art Supply. Um, really a top, top favorite. It has this really nice, cool texture on the outside. I've made this one my travel sketchbook. Anywhere I go, I grab this. If we're going someplace fun or on vacation, I will not be seen without this. I love this sketchbook. Um, the paper's not quite as thick as the leather one, but that doesn't really bother me. Uh, these sketchbooks are for me, and I do sell artwork from my sketchbooks as well, but mostly uh, these are just me documenting special places we go or special moments that we have or just a good way to kind of de-stress. I love to be in my sketchbook. So that is a, a top favorite sketchbook for me as well. And you can get them in a couple different sizes. I just like this, this mid-size right here. It's a good everyday sketchbook. All right. Now, let's see. This is like, I think it's a faux leather. This is probably the thinnest of all the papers. Um, I don't know if you can even hear that. But the quality is definitely thinner and smoother. But I love it. It handles the watercolor in a really fun way. It does buckle a little bit. But again, that doesn't bother me. Um, and it also handles the pen really well. It has a little bit more yellow tone to it. 
compared to some of the other papers. But sometimes that just gives it a nice feel to it as well. That also does not bother me. And this is, I'm going to mispronounce it, but uh, Rhodia, R-H-O-D-I-A. Um, you can see how it handles color and pen and watercolor. This is a great sketchbook. It um, definitely has like a harder um, outside, whereas the Lita and the leather are soft, okay? So if you're sitting outside and you're wanting to um, not have it bending over your knee or something like that, you don't have a tabletop, this is a good option for you. So I hope that's helpful. Have any of you, oh, thanks Amber. You like the sketches, I'm glad. Um, have any of you found a sketchbook that you are just in love with? Uh, jot it down in the notes or in the comments. I'd love to hear. Um, and feel free to go on Amazon or in Google and check out these sketchbooks. I will, um, I just think they're some of my favorites. I've gone through like a million sketchbooks and these are some of my favorites. So hopefully, hopefully that's helpful. All right, let's dive into my third favorite material for sketching, which are my pens. So pens, yes, we're diving into pens and not pencils. I'm going to tell you why a little bit later. So, whew, getting away from me. This particular one is Stedtler. It's a waterproof pen, which is great. They're made in Germany. And um, I just actually like the feel to this pen. It just has a nice... Um, mild grit to it almost so it's not slipping out of your hands i i like the feel of this pen even more than uh this even though they look almost identical um this is also a uh, water resistant and this is um sorry i forget which one this is i meant to grab the copic pen actually which i have right somewhere but Cop copic is another one that i really like and uh, it has a great pen tip to it and it just flows really well. Here we go. This feels really nice. It's definitely a little more slick, but Copic is um, a great one as well. And uh, get a variety of pen tips. That way you can uh, have some interesting changes to your sketches. You don't want them to all be the same. Don't be afraid of the thicker ones, but um, it's also nice to have the fine point as well. Let's see, Amber is asking, are you sketching from real life or photos? Both for my sketchbooks, both usually photos, um, but I will try to throw in a real life um, from life uh, image as well. And it just really depends where I'm at. But a lot of times for me, I like to do my morning sketches and that has to do with like, I just put on an audiobook and I am drinking my morning matcha and sketching some horses or dogs or just something that I'm getting myself into the creative flow. Um, kind of pre-COVID, I used to go to New York City for uh, Society of Illustrators, their sketch nights, and that would be all uh, sketching live, which was a blast. And those were actually larger different sketchbooks that we'll have to cover another time. Ah, thanks, Lynn. That was nice. Can you spell the first one? Yeah, let me spell. Let me spell that first one. The leather one you're talking about, uh, Lauren. Let me see. They actually almost hide their logo here, um, so you can get theirs at www.monsieurnotebook.com. All right, and they've got this little emblem there. I hope that's the one you were asking about. Cool. All right, so back to pens. I got sidetracked there. Uh, so we have Stedtler and Copic. I really love, they're both uh, water resistant or waterproof, which is great because when you're in your sketching process, you can actually sketch it out first and then go in with your watercolor afterward and uh, your pen won't run, which is great. Now, there are some cases where I don't mind the pen running, and it actually has a really cool look to it. And that's when I use my other favorite pen, which is a Pilot pen. And this has the nib, and you actually in, you know, put the ink into it, and you can buy waterproof ink or not. You can buy different color inks. I love this pen. This is a beautiful, beautiful pen. 
and if I'm really serious about my sketching in the morning, um, this, this is a great one. And it's definitely fine point, but you just get a really beautiful weighted line. If you press harder, you get a thicker line. If you release, you get a thinner line. So you have some options with this where you don't with these. But these are dependable and kind of easy go-fors if you're wanting just to know exactly the kind of line you're gonna get. I wanna show you a little bit of what I mean by the uh, pen bleeding into the water into the watercolor. Um, so if you can see here, I'll make sure it focuses. This is where I use that pen with my watercolor, my watercolor washes, and um, it just creates kind of a soft edge to the pen, and it's kind of cool, and it also pulls some of the ink out, and it creates its own um, its own bleeding wash. Uh, it's really fun to work with. So don't be afraid of it mingling with your washes a little bit, and play with it. Sometimes it'll look awesome, sometimes it won't, and that's okay, and then you learn and you just kind of get used to your materials. It's kind of like you have to get to know each other, you know? Uh, so also, great pen. All right, we are running out of time. I'm gonna have to come back for more information on some of the brushes that I love. Um, but I wanna see if you, I'm missing some of your questions here real quick. All right, cool. I hope this was helpful. Um, let's definitely chat again because I have some great brushes that I'd like to recommend for your sketchbooks and also um, like a little plain air watercolor set that I think you should have as well. But I've got a scoot. I'm sure you have to go to. I want to make sure to give you your giveaway and also invite you to something this week. All right. So the giveaway, I'm giving away this print of the stallion and it's just very energetic and um, very uh, painterly in its approach and I'm going to be giving that to somebody here who's commented. So if you haven't commented yet, you can just tell me either your favorite fall beverage or let me know if you'd rather be invisible or um, fly, if you'd rather fly. So get your comments in as much as you can and I'm going to pick a winner in a minute. In the meantime, I want to invite you all to sketch with me this Thursday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to be doing, I actually created a Facebook group for you and we're gonna go live in the Facebook group so that I can interact a little better with you there and um, provide some references for you as well. So I'm still working out some of the details, but I'd love for you to jump into Facebook as soon as we get off of here. Um, I want to give you the link here. Um, actually, Jared, if you're on here, um, could you share the link for the Facebook group? Um, I wrote it down and then I tidied up my desk right before I went live, so I don't have the link in front of me. Oh, here it is. All right, so you're gonna, if you want to just type in the URL on top, it's gonna be www.facebook.com slash groups slash Jen Brandon Studio for artists, okay? So that's artists, plural. So go to the group Jen Brandon Studio for artists and Thursday night, we're going to sketch together and uh, you get to actually see my sketching process. We'll um, try to set up some timed sketches and hopefully just actually chat too. So it'll be fun, it'll be totally low key. Since we can't quite do it together in person in a real life room, I thought this would be the next best thing. Hey, Melissa, glad you could jump in here. So yeah, Lauren, it sounds like fun, right? I hope you can make it too. And Erin, uh, that would be so fun. I'd love for you to be able to sketch with me. So these are not going to be uptight drawings and sketches. We're going to be working on time sketches and gestural expressive sketches. Uh, it's it's gonna be fun and I'd love to be able to show you how to kind of curate your sketchbook in a little bit, in a little way, so that you can have a coffee table worthy sketchbook. So you have to start somewhere and uh, we're all learning, right? We're all just on our own journey of our own creative journey and it's just so much fun. So I'd love to be a part of it with you in this way. And then in that group, I think we're gonna do some more things as well and it's just gonna be a great group of artists to be a part of. So you are the first ones to be invited into this group and I'd be honored if you'd hop over there and uh, jump into the group. If you can't find it, message me here 
or on Facebook so that I can get you in on that group, all right? If you haven't grabbed your free PDF, be sure to do so. All right, so I'm excited to see you guys there. Who do you think will be there? And I have a winner for you for tonight for this print of the stallion. And the winner is Patty, Patty Vincent of Patty Vincent Studio. Congratulations, thank you for being here. Uh, you've won this print, be sure to message me, uh, shoot me a DM with your address, I will send it to you for free. And I'm just so glad that you guys are here with me. And I can't wait to sketch with you. So before you go, I just wanna close out again with my favorite quote. Um, sometimes we take ourselves a little too seriously with our artwork, right? So this is what I like to keep up in my studio. It's by Neil Gaiman and this is it. Go and make interesting mistakes. Make amazing mistakes. Make glorious and fantastic mistakes. Break rules. Leave the world more interesting for you being here. Make good art. So that's what I'd like to leave you with tonight. I'm thrilled to be here with you and I can't wait to talk to you next week about more stuff about art and your journey with it. We're gonna have a great time. So always feel free to shoot me any questions you have so that we can chat about it here in an upcoming Art Tip Tuesday. You guys have a great night. I will see you later.